have you calmed down yet? Because that race was absurd. I don't think anyone was going to be able to predict this outcome for this race. And don't hate me for saying it, but a race without Lewis Hamilton sure brought a lot of unpredictability for who was going to win, who was going to lose, where everyone would end up. We have so much to talk about, and let's get right to it. Hey everyone, welcome back to a brand new race review where we put all the races in the 2020 season calendar up against each other to see which one's the worst and which one's the best. Here are the standings so far. Today we are reviewing the Secure Grand Prix. We've got a lot to cover. Our biggest anticipation for this race, of course, is George Russell, who's filling in the shoes of Lewis Hamilton, who is out this week. And looking right off at the start of this race, what a getaway. When he qualified second, I was a little bit worried because with the last race, it seemed like that was the worst starting position. Typically having seen P1 and P3 jump ahead into that racing line, but that was definitely not the case today as George just pretty much ran away with it after the first turn. Everyone starts to file into a line going towards turn four. You see Kimmy spinning off in the background. No incidents yet until we get to turn four. You have Max, Perez, and Leclerc going three wide into the turn. Perez kind of closes off the corner, but he was ahead and he had the racing line. Leclerc tries to jump in on the inside, but ends up colliding with Perez's back tire, sends Checo spinning. Max, in order to avoid them, tries to go around, but finds himself in the gravel. And that is the end of both Max and Charles's race. Of course, this sent Sergio back to the back of the grid. So of course, the safety car comes out after this first lap incident. Eight laps pass by and we're ready to get going. George has a great restart and gets a good gap on Bottas. Meanwhile, Bottas is losing time by kind of getting in a little bit of a scuffle with Sainz. Eventually, Sainz actually pulls off an overtake, but then goes wide, runs off the track a little bit, and has to give the spot back to Valtteri. We saw a lot of wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing happening, especially even in the back market with the Williams against the Alphas. We also had a really interesting battle taking place between Norris, Albon, and Perez making his way back up through the field. They were all just side by side, Albon spending a lot of time trying to get past Norris, who by this point was suffering from tire degradation. Albon's able to pull off the overtake on Norris. Perez capitalizes off this and just is able to carry that speed and even propel himself past Albon. During this time, I'm paying attention to the gaps between Russell and Bottas just to see how much Russell can push that lead. At one point, Russell was ahead by three seconds. Next, it was back down to two. AWS telling me that the tires are dead when he says they're fine. Who to believe? I don't know. Definitely not <laughs> AWS. So by lap 28, we start seeing a few racers come in for their initial pit stops, the likes of Kvyat trying to pull the undercut on Ricardo. So at the halfway mark, George is leading comfortably, Mercedes won too. How did we view the first half of this race? I put both racing and excitement up at a seven. It was just really good battles between stuff going on at the front, stuff going on in the midfield, stuff going on with the back markers. It was just action all over the place. And then I bumped the drama up to an eight just because you had that battle going on between the Mercedes where you're like, ooh, is this gonna be the unexpected win from Russell? Is he going to really prove what he's capable of today? And then, of course, the incident between the three drivers at turn four. I didn't expect it to have such a catastrophic outcome for all three of them so early on in the race. So that puts my overall score for the first half at roughly around a 7.5. Much similar to you, I did view the most dramatic moment of the first half being the first lap incident. You had three really top contender teams that were looking to put pressure on the Mercedes, two of which are out, Max and Leclerc, after a great qualifying from Leclerc. It opened the door for someone new to be on this podium. Scoring my drama a six, looking towards my excitement, aside from the opening laps, I did only score this a six because afterwards, once I finally got comfortable, I was more or less just tense about the gap between Russell and Bottas. And then in terms of the driving, it's on par with you at a seven. Very content with what I was seeing. Scoring my first half at 6.3. I'm going to round that up to a 6.5. This brings us into the second half where we are immediately watching a battle go down between Ocon and Stroll. So Stroll is fresh on new tires, but they haven't quite warmed up to temperature yet. So Ocon is able to pull off the overtake, but it's just been back and forth between these two 
almost all race. Next, we get a heart attack of a message. George Russell coming in saying low power. Then next thing you know, he sets a fastest lap. Yeah, it just seemed like there was some sort of setting or sensor issue. Luckily, the team was able to tell him the quick fix. And then Latifi takes us all by surprise when we suddenly see his name plummeting down the order thinking what on earth has happened to him we see his car is parked off to the side yellow flags and then a virtual safety car just right before this though it really looked like bodice was finally gaining on george and applying pressure the gap was getting smaller and smaller after each lap but after this virtual safety car it brought that back up to a full eight seconds and at this point everyone is using the virtual safety car supposedly to their advantage with pit stops except it did not really play out in anybody's favor. Vettel comes in and has a painfully slow pit stop yet again from Ferrari. Sainz and Ricardo also come into the pits hoping to capitalize off this, but as they are coming in, the virtual safety car ends, it goes back to a green flag, and this has essentially compromised their strategy and remainder of the race. While this is happening, Sergio Perez is going absolutely mad. He's going past Lance Stroll, he's going past Ocon. We're getting pretty comfortable with this race at this point. It seems like we're just looking at the gaps, any potential undercuts, and the next thing you know, we have another yellow flag shining out for Sector 3. We get word that Jack is coming into the pit without a front wing because he hit the wall. Ran a little bit wide, got lost in some dirt, and is actually really lucky that he only lost his front wing and wasn't out of this race entirely because he came super close to hitting it straight on. Yeah, his front wing ended up onto the track. Virtual safety car comes out and Mercedes tried to jump on this opportunity and bring in both of their cars. Mercedes pit lane team, not necessarily ready for George. He ends up having a whole five second pit stop, which we thought was pretty bad. Valtteri is next in line for his pit stop change. Fortunately, the both Mercedes have quite a substantial lead, although Valtteri's pit stop is a lot more chaotic. At one point, they realize that they're putting on the wrong tires onto his car, and in fact, end up just putting back on the exact same tires he came in with. His brakes were on fire at one point. Pretty much now we're thinking, oh, okay, so Valtteri's no longer a worry for George Russell to take this win. And just when we thought that George was in the clear, he has to come back into the pits because Mercedes have realized that they put Valtteri's tires on George's car. And as a result of him having to come into the pits once again, while it has been upgraded to a full-fledged safety car, he gets dropped back to sixth. And we're still hoping that there are enough laps in this race for him to be able to regain the lead. We were really hoping the safety car wouldn't last that long, just so that it would give more laps for the racers to be able to make their way back up. Just as the safety car was about to come in, we see Stroll almost rear end the back of Ocon, kind of inevitably ended up giving Sergio a great chance to pull away from them as the safety car went in. And that's what we saw. Sergio was able to get away well, and now we have George putting on the pressure on everyone else in front of him. We have Russell making his first move on Bottas in one of my favorite overtakes of the season. George! They go wheel to wheel. He makes the move stick. He's looking really strong. He's now passing Stroll, Ocon. He's back into second place. We then get a radio message from the Mercedes garage saying, back left puncture. And we were first confused saying, oh, that must be Bottas because he's the one who's falling back so slow and not Russell. But it was, in fact, Russell. Next thing you know, we see him drifting off into the pits once again to get a new fresh set of soft tires on. And now he's just left scrapping for the last points that he can salvage. I couldn't believe after two incidents happening to him, could it get any worse? Was he actually going to end up not getting any points still even in a Mercedes? He is somewhat able to recover, moving his way up into a measly ninth, which was very much a disappointment to, I think, all fans. If he was in a Williams, this would have been a fantastic day for us. Although with George's race going down the drain, it brought light to Sergio Perez, who was taking away the victory here. From being knocked down to last on the opening lap to now being in first place on the final few laps. Albeit it did come at the misfortune of some other drivers, but there's no denying Perez was brilliant. It was heartbreaking for Russell, but I was truly happy for Sergio. And especially after hearing his radio message, 
my heart. It was more of an emotional reaction because it's been so long and he's been fighting. It's been a really tough year for him. Of course, we can't forget about Ocon putting that Renault into second place, earning them their third podium of the season. And then Stroll getting on that podium, maybe finally putting his string of bad luck to an end, and also giving Racing Point their first ever double podium. So important in this battle for the Constructors' Championship. So a very unconventional podium. No one could have predicted this. Cass, how did we score the second half? In terms of my second half scores, these were potentially some of the highest scores that I have given out all season. I gave my excitement a 9. The only reason it wasn't a perfect 10 was because of the heartbreak that we all felt for Russell. But I was gauging this more off of my overall emotions that I was going through in this second half of the race. And as as for the racing and drama, I gave both of them a perfect 10 because the level of racing was just immaculate just because everything was so unpredictable both in terms of the overtaking that was happening grid positions where people were being bold enough to pull off some superb moves you had dnfs you had crashes you had slow punctures this race really gave us everything in the second half and also one of the most unconventional podiums that we've had all season so this brings my overall score for the second half at a 9.5 on my side i gave my excitement in eight. I was really invested in this. I was really content in seeing that we had the race leader having to fight his way back up to that first place position and it really looked like George was going to be able to do it. A lot of dramatic moments came out of this and that's what made me score the drama in nine. Every ten or so laps there was something new being thrown at us where you have a virtual safety car coming out, Jack losing his front wing, terrible double stack. The racing, I scored it a ten. Really impressed with that. Checo's driving, gave him the win he deserved. So this scored my total second half a 9. So the official score for the Sakhir Grand Prix is an 8.125. We're going to round that up to an 8.25 for just such an unpredictable race today. Here are the standings now. If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave it a like. Let us know in the comments if you agree or disagree with our scoring. How did you view this race? We have one race left for the 2020 season in Abu Dhabi. Will it be as good as this one? Who knows? You'll have to check out when we're back here next time for another race review. As per usual, make sure to follow us on social media at CCF1 channel. Don't forget to subscribe. We appreciate all the new subscribers and we'll catch you next time. Bye.